Hello there, Ray here. We got a brand new 1.15 snapshot. This is 19w36a. And with this comes some pretty big changes as they have kind of opened up the code so everybody can see it. And they did many quality of life updates as well as ported over some changes from other devices into the Java game. And they're also going along with their promise, fixing a lot of bugs that come up just from the last snapshot. If you guys do enjoy these snapshot review videos, you guys will really enjoy our streams where we have every Wednesday and Friday where we test out the newest snapshot with the viewers. You open up the servers, you guys can hop on with us and design up new farms and concepts. Be sure to follow me with all the links down in the description so you get notified when we go live. Let's get into all the changes with the newest snapshot. The main thing that they added into this snapshot is some changes that they did with the modding community. They're now releasing their deobfuscated code with each release of a snapshot. What exactly does this mean? Well, if you were to look at the code of Minecraft, it would come out looking similar to this. Now, this isn't Minecraft code. This is just an example. Now, notice how everything is just labeled with random letters. And a lot of times they go in order. Like here, they're just using A, and they're just going upwards until they get to J. And this is the way that Minecraft code comes if you were to look at it. It's hard to tell if this area here is supposed to be for like mobs. Is this is supposed to be for like blocks? Is this supposed to be like for entities? It's hard to know because what they did is they took the original name and they just gave it some random name. The modders spend a lot of time just trying to figure out what exactly does this mean in the game. So what they'll do is they'll look in the code for this specific name here and see what it's being used for. And they see it being used for, let's say, bees, then they'll eventually come to a conclusion that, hey, this means bees. It's a very slow and tedious process. And over time, they eventually are able to give labels to all these random words that you see here. And this is a really big deal because with the snapshot, instead of giving us these random words, they're going to give us the actual words that they use. When you look at the code, it's going to say like bee, beehive, and stuff that you understand to be inside of the game of Minecraft. This also means that we're probably going to change the way that we call stuff in Minecraft. Because for a long time, we've been calling stuff in Minecraft according to the weird names that we've been giving it. But now we can see exactly what Mojang employees call this, and therefore we'll probably be calling that the same thing. Now there's a whole community that actually goes in and looks at the snapshot code right after it comes out. And this is known as the Fabric Project, where they try to figure out changes that happen in the snapshots between each version. If you aren't doing modding, that's a great resource to go to. So now that you kind of understand what deobfuscated and obfuscated code is, I'll read to you what he said about the modding changes. In an effort to help make modding the game easier, we have decided to publish our game obfuscated maps with all the future releases of the game starting today. This means that anyone who is interested may deobfuscate the game and find their way around the code without needing to spend a few months figuring out what is what. There's a hope that the mod authors and the mod framework authors use these files to argument their updating progresses that they have today. These mappings will always be available and instantly and immediately as part of every new release of the version. This does not, however, change the existing restrictions on what we may or may not do with our game code or assets. The links to the Office Game maps are included as part of the version manifest JSON file may be automatically pulled for any given version. What that means there is just because they're giving you the easily read code that they use, you still cannot publish their code. And there's some other legal stuff that you have to be careful of when you are showing the code. Because essentially the code is owned by them, and if you don't own the game in Minecraft, then they don't want people who don't own the game to see the code. Now this is something that a lot of people have been asking for quite a while, and they did say that they're going to try to give it out to a select few people. It looks like they decided just to give it out to everybody, which is really cool because now anybody who wants to try to look into the code and kind of understand what's going on uh, can do that without having to deobfuscate it. And this really helps out the people that were deobfuscating it as they spent a lot of time trying to figure out what means what in the code. Now, I think they did this to try to update the modding community to get all the modders up to like the newest versions as a lot of them have been lacking behind. And some people are still just making mods for like 1.7, which is kind of crazy to think we're in 1.15 already. So hopefully with this incentive, a lot of people feel like it's okay to update to this version. Now, besides just giving this awesome ability to modders, they also came up with a whole bunch of little small changes. These are different changes that you probably seen in other editions of Minecraft, but you don't see in the Java edition. They went ahead and kind of like poured them over to the Java. The first one being that you can actually sleep or attempt to sleep in your bed at daytime. And this will actually make your spawn location be set to this location. Before you had to wait until it was dark in order to have your player hop into the bed. And only then would it put your spawn location where the bed is. So now if I go ahead and click, it says I only sleep at night, but my spawn location should be right here at the bed. 
I'm just gonna go over here and do slash kill. And yep, I was placed right beside the bed. So it is working. Next change is that they made the bell a redstone device as it cannot be powered using redstone component. Lever will make it ring. Uh, any kind of signal that's going into it that is power will make it ring. So maybe they'll leave the bell in its current location on the creative menu, which is down here. But they could also move it into the redstone component similar to the lectern, which has multiple uses. But since it's redstone, they put it down here. One thing I have to complain about is I never like it how they have moved the repeaters as well as redstone dust down here rather than it being up here. And I feel like a lot of these repetitive things like different colored trapdoors, pressure plates, and uh, we even got the gates here too are just taking up a lot of room. we got buttons here too. They should put these very unique devices at the very top and then put these repetitive ones towards the bottom. And I have talked to the developers about this, but it's not something very high on their list. They also added some new game rules. We can do game rule do, and there's a couple of different ones. You one right here, immediate respawn, set this to true. And that way when you die, you should immediately respawn. So wow, that was fast. <laughs> I just placed them right here, right beside the bed. So yeah, it works great. There's also a game rule do insomnia, which allows you to prevent phantoms from attacking you. So essentially if you guys will stay awake too long without going to bed, then the phantoms will come out and attack you. So by doing this game rule, you can prevent phantoms from coming in and spawning. Now this is something similar that I requested. I asked if it's possible to uh, stop phantoms from spawning when people are trying to do like their creative testing. As it's pretty annoying when you're trying to do testing and you're doing like mob testing. So you're trying to see how mobs spawn into the game. But during your testing you just get tons and tons of phantoms attacking you. And you can't just turn off mob spawning because that's what you're trying to test. So I'm really glad that they have went ahead and added this into the Java game. So I can go ahead and I can turn this to like faults. Then when I'm doing my testing, I won't have phantoms just piling up above me because different times I came on after tests and looked up and there was like 300 phantoms above me. So I changed the daytime to night and just leave it that way. The phantoms just keep piling up, even though I was just sitting here in creative. There's also a game rule for drowning damage. You can turn that on or off so your player will not take that type of damage. And in that same character, there's also falling damage. So you can just prevent that altogether. There's also fire damage, which you can stop. These are most likely to be used for map makers so that people don't die unintentionally because these are all kind of passive ways of dying. Another change that they made is that they have it so sponges that are wet will dry out in the nether all by themselves. Go ahead, I'll place down a, a wet sponge and it made like a little puffing noise. A pick block it, you see, is now a normal sponge. So it looks like it instantly works. Really cool. You could come over here in the nether with a bunch of sponges, lay them down, then uh, pick them back up again. Next one is that dispensers will now shoot off fireworks in the same direction that they're pointing. So this dispenser is pointing this direction, so let's go ahead and put some fireworks into it. And we will power it. And you see the fire rocket shoots off this direction. Similar to like a crossbow. So think of the crossbows in there shooting this firework out. The rocket would go in the same direction the crossbow is facing. So if you would take this same dispenser and we would face it upwards and power it. It's going to make the rocket go upwards. Uh, looks like the animation's a little bit messed up. Yeah, like see the rocket? Looks like it's turned sideways when it's going upwards too. Kind of funny. I'm sure they will uh, fix that. Let me see this one. Yeah, it looks a little bit odd. Like these seem like the same model is used for each direction. But yeah, it don't matter which direction you have this pointing. You can even point it downwards. This right here and go ahead and power it yeah the rocket goes downwards if you guys see on the project server we do have this huge jet in spawn that shoots off rockets and we actually made the rockets shoot horizontally which normally doesn't work and the way we did it was with some uh, water we pushed the rockets actually split them sideways on some water and ice to shoot them out sideways to make it look like the jet was shooting at people and it turned out looking really good, but this change here will allow us so we can just have dispensers pointing different directions. So we can have like the jet dropping bombs, or we can have the jet shooting forward missiles, or even the jet can be shooting like aerial missiles upwards. That's going to be a really cool change uh, once we update the ProTech SOP server to 1.15. They also did a bunch of bug fixes in this version, many of which I have complained about in the past. So let's go ahead and check those out. First one is entities crossing dimensions. Nether pearls cause tremendous lag. As you guys know, with the past farms that I've designed, when throwing items into a nether portal, 
it would create an enormous amount of lag because the item would go through and then it would be checking around the whole area looking for another nether portal trying to make that item come out at that nether portal so it has to search a quite a large area around the portal just to make sure there is another portal there and then try to find the one that's closest to this one to use it and all these checkings were causing a lot of lag once the item did go through the game would kind of keep track of where this portal sent that item but only for a short period of time and only if the item went through the exact same position as the last one did. So I'm really glad that they fixed this as this one's going to make it much nicer to make barns which use as portals. Like a lot of our farms on Protect SMP server, we have mobs can push into portals. And if they're not getting pushed in quite often, then the game will actually lag considerably when new mobs come into the portal. And overall, this is just going to make transportation a lot more easier as well as we can transport items from the overworld directly into another, and then we can have the nether loaded and transport them. And once the item is another, we can easily transport to spawns since it'll be one eighth the distance compared to transporting through the overworld. So definitely look forward to us to making a lot more farms using portals now. It seemed not to be lagging very much. I just threw a couple items through and mobs around me haven't froze or anything when I throw items through. So really glad that they have improved nether portals as they are a very useful tool to have in Minecraft. The next bug to be fixed is overloading a chunk with the data will cause it to be reverted to its old state. This is a cool trick that Earth Computer, one of the Protic members, discovered where you can actually load a chunk full of books which will essentially use up all the data that that chunk can hold and this will cause the game to not save it. So the one way to think of this is this dispenser is full of so much information that the game cannot go ahead and save it to its file, then the game just says, hey, I'm not going to save this because it's just too much. And it kind of just forgets about this whole chunk. Therefore, whatever you change in it, if I would add some more blocks in it next time, I would load this chunk up. It would say, hey, I don't, I didn't save this, but I also didn't save anything else that changed in this chunk. So you come back and your blocks are going to be missing. There's a lot of cool stuff that you can do with this as Johnny595 actually made a cool video showing uh, you can use this to get a lot of really unique stuff like you can get extremely rare villagers by doing this. I'll link his video down below and uh, Xerox also used this to allow us so we can easily fly to the world border. It just simplified his machine that he's building for Project Horizon where we're trying to fly to the end dimensions world border in every direction. And we're also going to all the world borders in the overworld as well as the nether. So if you guys haven't seen those videos, right, be sure to go ahead and check them out. But this bug is fixed as you could also use this to duplicate items. And in general, we really don't want to have a bug like this, which is causing trouble because people were using this as kind of a grief thing on some servers. So if you guys do want to take advantage of this, you'll have to do it prior to this update. This also means quite a few different things that also become discontinued along with this. They fix a bug in the end dimension to do with the end dragon. This is one that I showed you guys quite a while ago. I think back in 1.9 I showed this. But the dragon will actually freeze if you remove all the blocks around where this pillar is where it normally wants to sit. You can actually do this in survival where you can move this portal up and down. If you move it too far up, they'll actually be completely deleted by the game. And this will cause the dragon to completely freak out as its AI is trying to find this portal and it doesn't exist. So it can actually cause the game to crash as well. And you can also send this portal way down to the very bottom where it will get deleted as well. I'll link that video in the description as well. It's actually something you can still do to this day, moving the portal up and down. But I might have to do an update video to kind of explain how you do it now in these newer versions. They also fix a bug to do with making a new game where you can accidentally start the game without giving it a name. It said they fixed the bug that we showed here to do with dispensers being able to take honey out of hives that weren't completely full. This here, this hive here only has a honey level of two, which you can see right over here. And let's go ahead and try it out. Okay, I'm powering it and it still says two. And I think it hasn't used any bottles up. Yeah. So it seems they went ahead and fixed it, so I'm glad they fixed that bug that we talked about during the last videos as well as on the streams. The next bug that they fixed is another one that I complained about, which is bees suffocating when they come out of their hives. See the hives are a little bit messed up in this version. They don't have a proper texture for the top of them. Not sure if the bottom is this way too. Yeah, it looks like the bottom's also messed up. So I'll fix that, just a visual bug. The bug that they fix is that bees suffocate when they're against a solid block ceiling. This is similar to the situation here where bees are coming out to be placed inside a chocolate box and there's suffocation damage from that. Hopefully now when they come out, they'll look for like air gaps around it and go into those instead of solid blocks. 
And hopefully with these changes, it also make our bee farms more reliable as this one here is kind of directional where the bees would come out of the hive and then end up inside of this glass over here. And then we had to kind of let them flip through the glass to get back into their little workstations. Just like that. So it looks like they still kind of come out of here and then move over there. They also fix a bug to do with when you copy hive or a nest. And that would also copy the NBT value, which was causing when placed down the bees to duplicate. This is why we were seeing when we were placing down some of these hives, a bee would immediately pop out the side of it and then vanish it because it would have the same UUID as another one. And since there's two with the same UUID, the game will just not render one of them, so it will be invisible. They also fix a bug to do with bees being arthropods and the bane of arthropods sword in Minecraft was not working on them. Just like the smite enchantment works better on undead mobs, the bane of arthropods works better on arthropods such as bees, silverfish, and spiders. Bees only have 10 health, but using a sword should allow you to kill them more easily than using like a normal sword. To fix the bug to do with beehives versus bee nest. Now the bee nests were working, but the beehives weren't working, and they fixed that problem, so essentially these weren't increasing their honey level. And that's why in the previous farms I designed them all out of the hives rather than the boxes. Now with this fix, it should make it easier to actually build up these different farms, as you don't have to obtain the actual hive, you just have to obtain the combs in order to craft up your own beehive. It also fix a bug to do with custom beehives, so they changed, they changed the way the beehives would work. Instead of spawning out bees, they would spawn out other things. You can actually make them spawn out command blocks, which is something that could be a security risk on servers. It changes so now when bees are angry, even if you're holding a flower, they will still try to attack you. Before, they would just come up to you and be more interested in the flower than attacking you. It also changes so that bees that once do sting you, won't attempt to sting you again, so this bee has already stung me, and he's not going to try to uh, sting me again. Let's see, flying around. He's coming up to me, but he's not actually trying to sting. They also fixed a bug to do with leads being on bees. When they go into a hive, the game would remember that that bee had a lead on him, and when he comes back out, he'll still, he'll still have that lead on him. But the leads are actually duplicating because once they went into the hive, they are actually dropping it too. He would end up with a duplicate lead. They fixed the control pit blocking bug that we seen in my last video where, where you had a hive that was fully filled with honey and you place it down. It would constantly make that popping noise with like a bee coming out of it and would never lose its honey level either. You no longer get infinite honey out of these hives that way. They also said they fixed a bug so that you can pick block the hives to keep their honey level. As in before, I had to use a silk touch pick to actually get it even though I was in creatives. Go ahead and give it a try holding control pick block. And it should show the honey, and it doesn't. Look, it's not quite working right. Because that one was a full one, so it's a level 5 one. That one should be level 5 too. They also change it so that bees will go to bed at night. As before, sometimes they would turn night and the bees would still stay out well into the nighttime. And in real life, the bees will not be uh, scavenging around during nighttime. Seems like we're getting an excessive amount of zombies spawning right there. Look at that. Every single mob that has spawned in has been a zombie. Like look, all these zombies spawned right there and walked over this way. But it does seem that the bees have kind of went to their home. I suppose if the hive is full, they'll probably just stand around it then. They also fix the bug to do with bees, just stopping in midair and just kind of standing there in midair. They also fix some visuals with the bees, as there was some pixels on it that were kind of transparent. They also fix it so that the nectar looks the same. They also fix that bug that we ran into where if you destroy a hive, the bees wouldn't come out of it. He did it in creative verse doing it in survival. They also fix a bug where you would put entities on top as passengers of bees in creative, then the bee would go inside and come back out, it duplicate it. And the guys were playing around with this during the streams. They also fix the sound when you drink honey so that it will be on cue rather than kind of being delayed. They also change the amount of saturation that the bottles of honey will give you. So my food saturation level is at 1.2. Go ahead and the bottle of honey and do the command again. Now my saturation level is at 2.4. So they really reduced the amount of saturation that the honey will provide. Now I didn't think it was OP that it was giving the same amount as a notch apple as these do not stack and they're really cumbersome to carry around with you. Maybe they'll give some other uses for honey because currently they're not very useful. Overall the snapshot has a lot of very useful things as we've seen a lot of quality of life stuff for those that are making like mods as well as maps in the game.
just by giving us more different things that we can kind of mess around with in Minecraft, it just allows us to do more things. They also have proved that they're trying to remove a lot of bugs as they come into the game. Many of the bugs that we showed during the snapshot testing streams, they have fixed in this next version that came right after it. One bug I see they haven't quite fixed it is where the bees hitboxes will change so that they can actually suffocate. The red line moves up on top of them. Instead of the red line being down here, it gets moved to the very top. And I'm not exactly sure why that is. But maybe it was fixed with this one, but they just didn't announce it. With these changes, we should be able to do a lot more things in Minecraft. It should be a lot of fun. I'm really excited about tonight's stream where we will be testing out the newest snapshot with the viewers. So if you guys want to hop on to the server that we open up just for the testing, we'll be coming up with new farms and new concepts for ideas in Minecraft. But be sure to turn on notifications on YouTube as well as join our Discord. Follow me on Twitch. Those are all places I announce when the stream goes live and all those links down below. I will see all you guys tonight. And if you guys did enjoy this video, be sure to go ahead and give it a like as well as share it with someone else so they can learn about all the new changes to the bees. And if there's anything that you know of that you want to test during the snapshot stream, you guys can always tell me down in the comments if you can't make it to the stream. And I'd like to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye!